gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we're going to do a second edition. The other video did not come out at the end, and so it will be up later today. I have to edit it. Edit, 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 and I will get it edited, and I will put it up. That video was talking about police officers and the service that they provide the community and how they put their lives in danger for the community. The issue was on a police officer, do they have the, well, let's just say authority to lie constitutionally and or statutorily? Well, the question, if we deal with statute, I want you to pay attention. We have DC, the O, D, E, 1 109. We're going to put that in there and we're going to see what Gibberu tells us in our augmented Google search. So it'll be one second for it to pull up. Now, what the issue is, is that Police officers often testify before a jury. And what you all do not realize is that police officers have qualified immunity. Well, technically you did realize that, but you didn't realize that. You know what I'm saying? And so let's help you to get a better understanding of DC code. DC code is District of Columbia. Remember every city, every town, every village, every county, every state every territory every everything is a district isn't that interesting huh see liability that's what we need to talk about the attorney general for the united states is out of what state district of columbia all police officers in the united states are under whose authority the attorney general for the united states of america all attorney generals in every single state are under whose authority? The attorney general for the United States of America. So pay attention. The, oh, I'm sorry. They get technical with you. You got to understand their level of technicality. The District of Columbia shall defend any civil action proceeding pending on August 5th, 1997 in any court or other official municipal state federal form against the district of columbia its officers employees agents and shall assume any liability resulting from such an action and or proceeding why because ladies and gentlemen district of columbia is immune okay but against all of their officers liability be subject to liability in any case on the basis of activities of the district of columbia or its agencies officers employees they're all agents of the District of Columbia. We call them franchises, just like you are, all agents of the District of Columbia. Not going to go into detail about that. That's not the issue here. We're just talking about peace officers. Here are the limitations. Attention. Nothing in this section shall be construed as a waiver of sovereign immunity. Uh-oh. Or as limiting any other defense or immunity that would otherwise be available to the United States District of Columbia, its agencies, officers, employees, or agents. So, ladies and gentlemen, from time to time, you'll see the courts pretend to prosecute somebody, and you heard me say pretend. It's all an act. It's all an act. I can't pull this one up. I was actually looking for specific information on peace officers when they... Um, you see, it's not going to let me pull it up. But peace officers, I was looking for, let's see if it's going to let me see the entire search. No, because I just hit the refresh. And so it's now checking. And here something went wrong too. I had it pulled earlier. But it's in the other video that's associated with this. Let me go ahead and see if, uh-oh, there was a problem. We can't have no problems. Oh, well, we, we ain't going to have no problems. Well, don't start none, won't be none. Sorry, this has already been installed. Let's see if I could explain something to you. Uh, I have a consult in 45 minutes. And so this is the third consult in a week. 
So, because some people are not understanding the consults. And so what I do uh, from time to time is I'll explain on video how the consults work. Ladies and gentlemen, if you called an attorney and the attorney was to do a consult with you, the only thing you would be able to do is explain your situation and the attorney would tell you what your options are. But they wouldn't give you all of your options. They would just give you the limited options. One of the main options is that you could hire them and that they could take the case. And if they take the case, then <laughs> they'll do everything else that's necessary. You feel me? Well, ladies and gentlemen, what I am trying to tell you is that's not an actual consult. That's just somebody giving you some advice. What I do is I give you options, but not just one option, not just two options, but several options, several things to try. Not so much, uh, yes, I know it's scheduled. We're about to take care of that now. Um, not so much, ladies and gentlemen, uh, throwing everything at the wall and seeing and hoping something will stick, but giving you all of your options so that you can put together a strategy to figure out how to attack. For instance, there's a gentleman. He's got a foreclosure. His property has already been closed on. He came to me after the property was foreclosed on. We've had a discussion before in the past about another issue, and so this was his second consult in as many as four years. And I told him what to do. I mentioned this in the other video as well. And I realized that the court had postponed the hearing because, and it's a summary judgment hearing in an unlawful detainer. Unlawful detainers are summary judgments. That the court had postponed the hearing so that they could rule against him in January. And when it rules against him, it will have done so without Christmas and New Year's being the issue because remember courts got in a lot of trouble years ago about christmas and new year's evicting people during the so-called holiday season and so i apologize for the screen and everything i'm doing quite a bit i am at maxing out my cu that's only temporary because i'm working on some things and i'm trying to get a lot of stuff done before i uh use the other computer to have the consult later well, why didn't you have the computer in your head they do the video? That way you wouldn't have all these problems. Because your mama told me not to. I apologize, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. That idiot is getting on my nerves. All right, let's get back to the issue here. Ladies and gentlemen, that gentleman um, received a call from me yesterday. Because I read over some of the papers that he had, and it, the other attorney said that they presented to the court a copy of the note and the deed of trust. Now go ahead, everybody who's foreclosed on an unlawful detainer, they stipulate that they presented to the court a copy of the note and the deed of trust. But yet, when you receive a copy of the summons and notice, you never receive a copy of the note and the deed of trust. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry. If you go back and you review the record, you'll find that there is no note and deed of trust on the record at the time of filing. Oops, sorry, Charlie, which means that filing is unlawful and you should be asking for a dismissal with prejudice because they document that they filed these documents. Well, in order to do an unlawful detainer, in order to do a foreclosure, they must have the note and a deed of trust. Well, again, like I told you, it is important that the note and the deed of trust go together Take a look at the loan number associated with the note and the deed of trust. And then look at the foreclosure documents. There's a different loan number. When they give you notice of default, there is a different loan number. They are foreclosing on the wrong transaction. That's all you got to say. The loan number is a transaction number. It's a unique transaction number. It's called a unique identifier. These people are coming in here with the wrong account. And so I ask that this matter be dismissed, and I ask it to be dismissed with prejudice because they have vilified me on the public record. They said that I owed on this particular transaction number. I do not owe on this transaction number. As a matter of fact, the only familiarity with this transaction number that I have is this matter right here with them bringing it here. Now, I've told this body that... This ain't got nothing to do with me. And nobody wants to believe me. So let's take a look at their paperwork. 
That paperwork said they presented the loan note and the deed of trust. The deed of trust evidences the note. Without the note, the deed of trust does not exist. Everybody agrees with that. There is no issue of dispute with that fact. Well, they said they introduced both of these items, which must be brought together, into this court. If the court reviews the record, it'll see that that's not on the record. And, uh, excuse me, even if it is on the record, they never sent me a copy of what they were filing. But what I do have is this notice of default that they sent me. Notice the transaction number. Now take a look at the note, which they never introduce in the evidence because it can only serve as evidence if I'm notified. I did not receive a notice. So I ask that that be stricken from the record. But what we can do to make sure it's stricken from the record is take a look at that transaction unique identification number on that instrument because that is a security instrument. That security instrument serial number is different from the serial number on this instrument, which means that it is not the same matter. They are not associated with each other, and there's no way that these individuals can prove that they are, because I didn't agree to be associated with this one. I signed that note. Doesn't matter. Well, you admitted, and so we're going to admit it in the evidence. Well, I do appreciate you for being stupid, Your Honor. Oh, no, no, I'm not disrespecting the court. I'm talking about you. You're the one that's supposed to have judicial knowledge. You're the one who's supposed to be knowledgeable about the law. And here you are ignoring the law. When you ignore a fact, that means that you are stupid. See, a stupid person, don't, uh -uh, don't take it offensively. Stupid is stupid. Stupid is stupid. Anybody on this planet can be stupid. Stupid is not a bad word. Stupid only became a bad word when people wanted to be politically correct. So if you want me to be politically correct, you are out of your mind. I don't care if I did mention it. What I told you, it should be stricken from the record because it's not the same note. It's not the same contract. It's not the same transaction. And guess what? It was not served upon my person as required by law. Everything that's filed in the record, I must receive a copy of. You know, I did not receive a copy of his uh, notice of appearance, but he filed that into the record. I asked that that be stricken from the record with prejudice. And, and speaking of the notice of appearance, I got a problem. I'm told that he's an officer of the court. And I'm also told that this this deputy in your courtroom is an officer of the court. Well, I have a problem. I know the police department is under the executive branch of government, controlled by the attorney general. I know that the attorneys in every state are under the executive branch of government, controlled by the attorney general. Huh. Well, how can these two attorney general executive administrative branch of government agents be officers of this court wait are you a judicial branch of government or are you the executive branch of government are you administrating oh administrative so you are administrative branch of government because you're administrating justice only the administrative branch of government has the authority to administrate well at, at least that's the presumption so wait there's a question, and I must challenge that. What branch of government are you under? No, just say it on the record. No, no, uh-uh. This is a legitimate question. I have the right to challenge, and this is my challenge. I hereby command you on the public record to state what branch of government you represent at this very moment. I promise you that idiot will not answer. That idiot will try to think of an answer. They will come up with something other than the judicial branch. Excuse me. The question was simple. The question was plain. The question was clear. Are you part of the judicial branch of government at this very moment in these very proceedings, or are you part of the administrative branch of government? Now, if you say, hold on, if you say the judicial branch of government, then you are committing fraud upon the public.
you're interfering with the public's perception of the administration of justice because there is no way in the world you can have these individuals being officers of this court when they're part of the judicial branch of government, never, but the executive branch of government. They cannot be part of both. It is called separation of powers, and you have no authority as a court, nor does the Supreme Court, to make an officer of the court someone who is of a different branch of government. That is insurrection of the United States government. It is illegal. No powers can join together, especially against one of the people. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. These are the facts of what's going on in every court. And everybody's been sitting back allowing it to happen. This is why they do not allow me to go on appeal when they make the decisions. Somebody sent me a video of a woman in uh, Minnesota who went to jail. And the person who was talking made it seem like they had an ironclad case. But I only listened to about 15 minutes of the individual talking and I had to realize that the problem with the young lady in Minnesota is they didn't realize where they were. Ladies and gentlemen, where am I? Huh? How did I get here? You have to know where you are in order for you to bring forth such an argument. So if you just listen to what I just said, the first thing I did was highlighted what the facts are, documented what the facts are. Nobody can deny that they are officers of the court. Nobody can deny that the idiot put in a notice of appearance and you did not receive a copy of the notice of appearance, but the docket will show the notice of appearance. Do you know that everything is filed into the case you are supposed to receive a copy of? everything just like they tell you anything you file into the case you must serve a copy on the other party have any of you ever received a copy of the notice of appearance now i have because they won't play that game with me all right pay attention the notice of appearance he's subjecting himself to the court's jurisdiction the notice of appearance he's subjecting himself to the court's jurisdiction a sovereign or a representative of a sovereign cannot subject himself to another sovereign. Not in the United States, because all three branches of the government are a trinity. They are equal in power. One is not greater than the other. Do you understand that's why they claim they have three branches of government? Because they're following this so-called doctrine known as the trinity? It's a doctrine. It's not a fact. It's, there's no trinity. That's uh, Nimrod. Nimrod, the mighty hunter, the god and the man or king, Nimrod is where the Trinity comes from. Don't believe me? Do your research. Don't go by Google. Google will sit up there and tell you, well, the reason why people believe this and the reason why people believe that, Google is full of, do your research. Go to the ancient research. Nimrod, ladies and gentlemen. See what black people do to our community? Nimrod! Nimrod is a, uh, let's see, how do we explain Nimrod? Nimrod was a piece of work in more ways than one. All right, let's get back to this police officer thing. Now, the reason why I'm on this police officer thing is because I realized that police officers do a dangerous job. At one point, I wanted to become a police officer. The only thing about it is I saw too many movies where police officers were corrupt, were doing things. I mean, uh, Chicago PD, I like the show. Okay, and I see some of the things they do in Chicago PD, and let's just say Chicago PD actually kind of hits it on the nail on the head with Sergeant Boyd, or is he a lieutenant? Lieutenant Boyd, excuse me. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I was going to go in there because I was going to make sure I treated people fairly, and I'm not the only one who had that concept of getting into the United States uh, police force. Because you can call them U.S. police force because they're all officers of the government. And was disillusioned. You see, I talked in the other video about the fraternity, the brotherhood, the, uh, what is that? Uh, they have a fraternity order. The order 
of the fraternity. Okay? The fraternal order of brotherhood. Ladies and gentlemen, police officers who go in and try to change the status quo end up dead. Or they end up being harassed and then eventually kicked off the force or forcing to leave the force. That's why the police departments operate the way they do. Ladies and gentlemen, there were several times I looked at the faces of the officers who were watching what these idiots were doing to me, and I saw that they did not approve. One officer, his name was Henderson, he actually came to me and said, man, look, you're bringing this upon yourself. He knew what they were getting ready to do. Told me I was bringing it up on myself. Ladies and gentlemen, these idiots almost broke my arm. When I say broke my arm, not at the joint. They almost broke the femur. Not That's not the femur. What's that stupid bone that goes... I said femur. Femur's the leg. What's that stupid bone that goes from the your wrist to your elbow? Well, that bone. I know the muscle's called a, uh, accepting something. Uh, uh, somebody doing buys... But it, 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 it's, uh, you know, try and mize and triple sets. I don't understand that stuff, y'all. But I do know that they left a pretty big whip and that they literally almost broke my arm. That's what I went through. And those officers stood by and allowed them to do it. They didn't care about the type of pain they were causing me. This is what just happened. This is what I just went through. These are police officers. All the correction officers are police officers. Uh, believe it since 911, that's what they did. They made all of the officers in correctional institutions police officers because when a national emergency happens, they are all federalized. Pay attention, people! Under the Attorney General. And he takes command of them. That's why they have the Joint Task Forces where the FBI cooperates with the sheriff and the sheriff cooperates with the city and the city cooperates with the state and all of the different police departments cooperate together. Please understand, they're all under the attorney general. Because they're under the attorney general, they cannot be officers of the court. Officers of the court are those who are of the judicial branch. Officers of the court cannot be of any other branch of government. There is no provision under any constitutional delegation of authority that permits such a stupid thing to happen ladies and gentlemen that is the pay attention that is the definition of insurrection some of you are going to get some ideas from the two videos like i said the other video will be up shortly i just have to edit that video I have editing software that I'm about to load up because I got 30 minutes before my meeting and I will edit that and I will get it up. But this is get it up. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I, hey, 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 I ain't supposed to be singing that song, but you know, I know the song. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I definitely want all of you to understand you cannot challenge. You cannot fight. What you can do, pay attention please, what you can do is you can say enough. You can start raising these issues and making them rebut what you're saying. I, I told you all I was going to be finished with the questions, the challenges. Bear with me because I am, I just have to streamline it. It's too much. It doesn't need to be that much, so I will be streamlining it. That's why I'm opening up the other computer, because I will complete it on the other computer, because the file is on the other computer, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, we will go ahead and let you go, and this will be part two, okay? So, we'll get back with you, okay? Y'all take care! Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go!